My name is Anne Lucas Burl, and I'm the co-editor with Lisa Francavilla of Thomas Jefferson's granddaughter in Queen Victoria's England, The Travel Diary of Ellen Wales Coolidge, 1838 to 1839. Ellen Coolidge had come to Boston when she married Joseph Coolidge in 1825. And Joseph became a China merchant, and Ellen was often left alone at home. And she had six very young children that she'd had in the course of five years. Ellen was beginning to get a little tired and run down. Her mother had passed away, so she was feeling a little sorrowful. And Joseph came back from a business trip took one look at her and said, you know, the sea in a new world will do more for you than medicine. So he proposed that she come with him on a business trip to London. And so they stayed in London for these nine months. And Ellen began keeping a diary um, of everything she saw and observed and heard and ate while she was in London for the purposes of sharing it with her sisters. The thing about the diary that sets it apart from another woman's diary written at this time is that Ellen Coolidge was at the right place at the right time. And she had a combination of life experiences and education that allowed her to really understand what it was that she was seeing and synthesize it in a way that she'd been taught to synthesize material from her grandfather and from her correspondence and sort of tutelage with him. Ellen has the amazing good fortune when she goes to watch Victoria open Parliament. And she's allowed um, tickets to the opening of Parliament because she's friends with the American ambassador, Andrew Stevenson. Mrs. Stevenson dresses her and puts her in her ostrich plumes and gives her her jewelry and her shawl and sets Ellen off wearing what she should be wearing and gives her all the instructions. And so with Mrs. Stevenson's outfit, Ellen goes and watches Victoria open Parliament. And she describes the scene just in amazing detail, what everyone's wearing, what the robes look like. And she sits herself down in a window well because the room is so crowded, there aren't seats um, you know, on the benches. Then some women move aside and allow her to come sit on the bench with them. So she says, I'm the only commoner this close to the queen. So she's allowed in a space that no one else of her stature is allowed access to. And she's describing the whole scene, and right when you think she's just going to say what a wonderful woman Victoria is, she proclaims that she's too short for royalty, and how silly the crown looks on her head. And um, she sums it all up by saying, um, I would gladly give Victoria six inches of my height to bring me down no lower than my pretensions and to raise her to her just stature. And so she has the ability to, to create these insights that are unlike any other woman's uh, writing at the time.